great looking crowd here tonight. Let's all stand and sing. Amen. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise. You may be seated for just a moment. I'm so glad that his love never runs out. I need all of it I can get. Amen. I'm, I'm so glad tonight that I know that I can count on his love. Tonight as we start, with, let me give you a couple of quick announcements. It's out on the, in the foyer. There are some calendars for November and December. If you will pick those up as you start to leave. Tonight, don't forget that this coming up Sunday is baby dedication service, and I think the last I heard was seven, maybe more. To see Pastor Brad if you want to have a child dedicated this Sunday. So that's a that's a lot of children. Amen. I am convinced. You get the purposes together, you have built a church. 
Amen. They do multiply. And don't forget, I hope you brought your sunglasses in because when Pastor Brad gets up here, they're going to have to dim the lights because it's reflecting <laughs> off of them tonight. I told him no need for him to go deer hunting in the morning because they're going to see him a mile off. <laughs> Whew. Yeah, he definitely needs some sun on top of that thing, don't he? <laughs> He's definitely going to have to have a... I almost told him, and I wanted to, and I pick at him because when he started all this, I, I kept telling him, I said, now, Brad, when you start pastoring, you can't wear a cap in the, in the church. You know, that's just one of my rules. You can't wear a cap in the church. I almost told him, now, you need to go get you a cap. <laughs> I almost had to change my rule here for him. Okay, um, several things going on in Port this coming up Tuesday, Tuesday morning, 11:30. We will be having service here again. Um, we had two surprise visitors this past Tuesday. We had, I know, 41. I think we ended up with 43, but I know we had 41. Ralph Horn spoke, and when he spoke, he brought at least 10 horns with him. And then some people showed up with a bunch of children. <laughs> and then people back there sitting there with a whole row full. <laughs> Filled up that whole pew. Belinda and Alicia, Alicia, Alicia showed up. I'm sorry, I have a trouble saying that. But they showed up with all the kids, and y'all were welcome. Yep, we loved it. it yeah. loved, they filled up a whole great. row over here. Because we told you it's for all ages. We loved it. Amen. You're welcome to come back this Tuesday because it is for all ages. And uh, so it was great. So it, that really had a lot more people here, but we had a great time. But this Tuesday, we'll have a short devotion. We will have communion. So if you would like to be here, I promise you this. My plan is to have um, unleavened bread and not styrofoam. Y'all know what I mean by that? Those of you who had communion, when we take the little cup and we take the top off and we take that piece of styrofoam out. <laughs> Y'all know what I mean? Oh, yeah. We're doing something different. As long as publics don't run out of it between now and Tuesday, we will have something different. But come and be a part of that, and I think it'll be something you'll enjoy. And then on the 24th, the church, on Tuesday night, the 24th, the next Tuesday night, instead of, you know, we usually do not have church on the Wednesday night before Thanksgiving. We move it to Tuesday night, and Pastor Brad will be doing communion on that night. And also we'll be serving barbecue sandwiches and chips. And if you would like to bring something, you can. Uh, that's on the 24th at 7 o'clock. So remember that, okay? Got that. We pick up a calendar and you won't have to remember it. You can just put it on your refrigerator and then you'll have it. And then there's a lot of things in December about the ladies' meetings and different things, so be sure to look at all of that. I pray that you will have a great Thanksgiving. Everybody, be safe. I want to also say today, I know today is Veterans Day, and I also, I'll never want to go by that without saying thank you to all the veterans. Amen. Yes. It is very important that we remember uh, our veterans and what they do for us. I'll be honest with you, and I, I don't want to get into the political side of things tonight, but I think that the United States of America has forgotten what our veterans have done for us. I, I believe we su we've seen that so much in the last two weeks that what they have paid dearly for. But I have not. I know what they have done, and, I, and I'm so thankful for them. So you be sure when you see a veteran to say thank you. To say thank you That's that right. you appreciate what they've done and what they've given up and I so I'm, I'm so thankful for that today and if any of them are watching tonight by live stream I want you to know that we truly appreciate what you have done and the sacrifices you have made for this country and may you always know that we thank you for that and that we love you for it tonight as we go to the Lord in prayer if my ushers are come Let's remember those that are sick. Let's continue to remember uh, Miss Joyce Brown, the loss of her son. She was doing, I really thought she was doing well yesterday. She seemed to really be at peace, uh, as much peace as she could possibly be. I, it was really good to see that. Heavenly Father, today, we thank you for your many blessings. I thank you so much, Father, that you've got us in your palm of your hands. Lord, even though the world may be going crazy, you still got us in the palm of your hand. I thank you, Lord, for your protection. I thank you for your grace. 
Most of all, I thank you for your saving mercy that you've shown to me and to many others. Father, tonight we bring the needs of this church to you. We bring the needs of those that are sick. Lord, we bring the needs of these that are fighting COVID to you tonight. Lord, I pray that you will let this vaccine work. 90% is great, but we want 100%. Father, we know tonight, Lord, that you can control this. And, Lord, we ask for your intervention. Father, as we begin to get together for Thanksgiving and families get together, Lord, I ask for your protection to be a fund of families. And, Lord, tonight as we give, I thank you for those that are faithfully giving to support this ministry. I thank you, Lord, for these that are faithfully supporting this ministry in their attendance and with their talents through singing and playing and teaching. I thank you, Lord, that they are faithfully serving you. And, Lord, I pray that they may continue to faithfully serve you. And, Lord, tonight as Pastor Brad comes with the word, Father, let the anointing of the Holy Spirit be upon him. Lord, let the, the Holy Spirit shine through him tonight. Father, let the words reach hearts that are ready to receive. Let us be here tonight, Father, ready to accept your word. And let us just worship you tonight, Father, in everything we do. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen.
Father, tonight. We pour out our praise to you in this place, Lord. We thank you for the breath that you have breathed into our lungs tonight, Father. We thank you for the presence of the Holy Spirit that we feel in this place. Church, just take a moment and just watch me for just a few moments. Don't let him, don't leave here like you come tonight. Leave here changed. I know it's Wednesday night. I know it's middle of the week and some of you are tired. But we come to serve God. Amen. Let's serve him for just a few moments. Lift up your hands and give him a shout of praise in this church. Father, we praise you for what you're about to do. Lord, we already feel your presence stirring in this place. Sing it with them, church. to take off on Friday because we're tired. He's still up and going on Saturday and Sunday. Praise God. He don't take a day off. Some of you come in here tired tonight. You felt like you couldn't worship God, but God, God is here in the presence of the Holy Spirit. If you don't feel it right now, you need to let God know I accept your presence. I'm willing to worship in the presence of the Almighty God. Yes, you may be tired, but you can still worship God. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes. Amen. Woo. Father, touch them tonight. God is here tonight. The present, if you need a touch right now in your body, you need to come to these altars. If you need healing, if you need something in your body, if you need something for your family, don't wait until the end of service. Come while the Holy Spirit is stirring. Miss Rhonda, I'm going to do something I never tell you to do. I want you to play I Feel a Stirring. I want you to come down here tonight.
somebody else that needs prayer. You know I don't mind holding up the service. I can still preach a word when we get done. Before I let the teenagers go, before I open up this door, if you need a touch tonight, one of you teenagers, listen to me. Don't be ashamed to come to the altar. If you need God tonight, if you just need to talk to God, look, you don't have to tell a pastor what's going on. If you just need God to touch you, maybe, maybe you've got weak in your faith and you need God. You come on down. Don't you let the world tell you you're unqualified to walk to the altar. You come on down. We serve a forgiving God. Amen. We serve a loving God, church. It don't matter the age of the child. God said, I'll forgive them. It don't matter what your parents don't know. God knows. Maybe you need to make it right with God tonight. Hallelujah. There's nine or ten. I counted a while ago, eight or nine teenagers in this church. You guys get on fire for God. Imagine what you can do for your generation. Because God can use you in a mighty way. So if you need prayer tonight, Come on down. I'm going to give you just a minute. Mess around if you'll sing just a little bit of this song, and then I'll come back up. If nobody comes, Benny, you can take them out. If you need a touch tonight, don't be fearful. We've all had, let me tell you something. We've all had to take that walk at one point or another. Amen. The first step is going to be the hardest step you ever take. But by the second and third, you'll feel like God's carrying you to the altar. And if you... Teenagers, if you don't want to come by yourself, you look over Mr. Benny and Mrs. Alicia's back there. Tiffany's right there close. There's several in here that'll walk down with you. They'll hold your hand and carry you down here. And if they won't do it, you just raise your hand and pastor will come get you. You don't have to do it at all. We're here for you. If you need a touch tonight, come on down. There's a Listen to these words. Oh, 
day long I struggle. All day long I struggle. For answers that I need. For the answers that I need. But then I come into his presence. Come into his presence. And all my questions be. Normally we would go out and talk to Mr. Benny and the presence of God is just too strong to open that door right now. But I have a message for one of you, I truly believe. Maybe even two. So I want you to be seated for just a moment. This song that they are singing, trouble vanish, hearts are mended in the presence of the King. Teenagers, adults, you need to realize when you're in the presence of God, you accept God into your life, troubles vanish. The old you is no more. God gives you a new plan. Your steps are ordered by Him. I got a message tonight. I, and I probably won't get it all. It's 7.40. If I stay late, don't worry. I normally don't run late, so y'all just bear with me. But I got a message on unforgiveness tonight. And I also have a message that's going to tie right back in to grace. And I didn't know why I had this message until just a few moments ago. But there's some of you here that's experiencing some unforgiveness. And you thinking, well, Pastor, what you mean unforgiveness as far as me and Christ? That may be part of it. There's something in your life that you can't let go of. Maybe you blame yourself. Maybe you blame others. Maybe you have an unforgiving spirit towards a family member, a friend. Whatever it may be, you're experiencing unforgiveness. Luke 6, 37. Natalie, when you put it up there, just please leave it up there for a few moments. It talks about unforgiveness. It says, don't judge others and you will not be judged. You know, we're quick to jump on the judgment train. And we're quick to want to look at how bad others are doing. But the Bible says, and you don't have to change it now, just please leave it. But you need to realize that don't look at the speck in someone else's eye when there's a log in yours, and the Bible tells us that. But that ain't where I want to stop at. It says, do not condemn others, or it will all come back against you. Forgive others, and you will be forgiven. And unfortunately, forgiven ain't on there, but it's on that screen back there because of the letters. But you will be forgiven, church, if you forgive. You will be forgiven only if you forgive. You know, we hear people all the time talking about forgiving spirits and that it demonstrates that a person has received forgiveness from God. Do you realize when you're able to get rid of the pain and the anger and the hurt that someone has caused this because you have experienced forgiveness in your life? For a long time, there was people in my life that I thought I'd never forgive. Matter of fact, there was moments in my life that I had no will to forgive them. There was times in my life when I'd rather see them fail than see them breathe. And I know that's sad, and you may say, well, Pastor, why do you say that? Because I'm a realist, and the reality is I'm just as human as you are. But God changed all that. There became a time in my life when God ruined that bitterness I had for those people. Now, it was hard for me to learn how to forgive people. 
If you wronged me, I had no need for you. If you made me mad, I really didn't have a lot of need for you. I'm not saying that was right. Listen to what I'm telling you. I could not get over it because I did not know the love of Christ. I did not know what Christ had for me. I had never experienced that love for Christ. And all of a sudden, when I give given my life to Christ, compassion began to come in. And you can ask Candace now, and she'll say, I wish she would get some more of it because she tells me all the time I'm not compassionate enough. But then I look and I think about things that used to would not matter that I could care less about people's feelings and I could care less if I hurt their feelings and I could care less what their life involved or what they was doing. But now I have compassion for those people because I realized there was a man that had compassion for me, church. A man that was willing to forgive me even though I wronged him so many times. He was willing to look up and say, I die on this cross for you. I stretch my arms out and let them put nails in my hand because it's all done for each one of you. And you look and you say, well, Jesus did it here on earth, but does he really have compassion for me now? Yes, Jesus still loves you. Jesus still has compassion for you. You're still experiencing grace and mercy right now in this very present time because we all fall short of the glory at some point or another. And there's a, a, there's a time when we need grace and mercy. And even though we mess up and even though he has all rights to be upset with us and he has all rights to say, you know what, I'm tired of your mess. I'm done with you. I'm going to write you off. I've had enough of you keep running backwards. I've had enough of you turning from me. i had enough of you not listening to me. So now you're on your own. I'm done with you. There's no more hope for you. As far as I'm concerned, I have no more need for you. But Jesus don't do that. He's not that type of guy. He says, I have forgiveness for you. No matter how many times you mess up, no matter how many times you run from me, I still love you and I will still forgive you. All you have to do is ask. But yet we want to hold grudges. Some of you in here today don't even realize it, but that grudge you're holding is hurting you more than it's helping you. Don't let that person cost you everything. Don't let him cost you your chance at making it into heaven because the Bible is clear in verse 37 of Luke chapter 6 that forgiving is the only way for us to get into heaven. We must forgive others in order for us to be forgiven, church. That reminds me of the story of the tax collector. They forgive him of his debt, but then he don't want to forgive others. You say, we must forgive them. Nothing they done I don't care what someone has done to you. Nothing they have done has been as bad as some of the things that you have done to Jesus Christ. Amen. Do you realize that today? You say, well, how you figure that? You've denied him before. You may say, well, I never denied him. Yes, you have. At some point in your life, you're denied Christ. Most every one of us have. At some point in your life, you failed Christ. At some point in some situation, you really messed things up. But you want to hold a grudge when somebody messes up against you. That's not the way it works. Think about Judas. Judas, this man betrayed Christ. This man, Christ said, I know that he's going to betray me, but look at what he said. He said, he's going to betray me. There's no doubt, but I still got him a place at my table. There's still a chair open for him, church. Look in uh, John 12. 13, I'm sorry, verse 21. It says, Now Jesus was deeply troubled, and he exclaimed, I tell you the truth, one of you will betray me. Now he didn't get loud, he didn't get mad, he didn't get upset, he just said, one of you will betray me. And the disciples looked at each other, wondering whom it could be. The disciples Jesus loved was sitting next to him at the table. And Simon Peter motioned to him to ask, who's he talking about? So the disciples leaned over to Jesus and asked, Lord, who is it? Jesus responded, It is the one whom I give the bread I dipped in the bowl. And when he had dipped it, he gave it to Judas, son of Simon Iscariot. I don't know how to say the word, but that's close enough. When Judas had eaten the bread, 
Satan entered into him. Then Jesus told him, hurry and do what you're going to do. None of the others at the table knew what Jesus meant. Since Jesus, Judas was their treasure, some thought Jesus was telling them to go and pay for the food or to give money to the poor. So Judas left and went out that night. And upon leaving, Judas went and sold Christ. Sold him out. Christ knew this. He knew that this man was going to sell him out, but yet he said, come and sit and eat with me. I will still feed you. I want to tell you something today. Christ is willing to feed you spiritually, even though you messed up. And you need to realize that person that you're harboring bitterness to, that you're harboring anger to, still needs a seat at your table, church. They still need to be fed because they need to see the life that you are living. They need to see that you are spiritually stronger than them. I can tell you that I got a family member right now that I want nothing to do with as far as personally. But if they come and ask me to sit down and eat with them, it would be a hard thing to do. For a long time, before I become pastor of this church, I prayed, Lord, don't let me see them uptown and them smart off. Whatever you do, don't let me see them uptown and them smart off at me. Lord, whatever you do, don't let them come between me and you because you know if they smart off, I don't know if I got enough of you in me to hold back. I'm just being real. Now, y'all act like I'm the only one that does it, but some of you just as hot-tempered as I used to be. But I had to pray that. And we would see them in places, and the first thing that popped in my mind is, boy, I'd like to knock him off that stool. <laughs> but you know what? God changes things. God can remove bitterness, and now I don't have that anger. Now, that don't mean I'm going to run out and go be their best friend, but I don't have that anger towards them anymore. I actually look at them and think, Lord, I hope you save them. I hope you can get them into heaven. Sometimes I wonder, Lord, what I need to do. What can I do to help them? But in all reality, I know I have to forgive them. I know I have to let go of some of that anger. And it's hard at times. It's not easy to look at somebody that you know has done something wrong and look at them and say, I still love you, but Christ done it for you. And he's still doing it for you today. Look at what he told Peter. He said in Matthew 18, verse 21 and 22, it says, Peter came to him and asked, Lord, how often should I forgive someone? Now, Peter, of course, thought, well, maybe seven times because, of course, seven is the perfect number. In Jesus' eyes, everything was perfect with the number seven. So let me just say seven. But Jesus said, oh, boy, you ain't even close. He says, no, not seven times, but 70 times seven is how many times you're supposed to forgive someone. In other words, each and every day you're supposed to forgive them and continue to forgive them. No matter how many times they wrong you, you are to continue to forgive them until you can't even count the number of times you have forgiven them. Some of you don't realize, but Jesus has forgiven you 70 times seven many days. And we must forgive others the same way. What's going to get us into heaven? The forgiveness of our sins is what is going to carry us to heaven, church. It's going to be because we were forgiven. And because of forgiveness, we became qualified to walk into the gates of heaven. Because until you are truly forgiven for your sins, until you truly accept Jesus Christ as your Savior, you're not going into the gate. But he said, the moment I forgive you, you will be able to walk through the gates. You will be qualified to be a member of heaven. Forgiveness is going to carry us to heaven. Forgiveness is an act of grace. The unwillingness to forgive people robs you of your salvation. It robs you of your joy. Grace is an undeserved blessing from God given to his people. There's four sides of grace you need to realize. There's grace to live, grace to forgive, grace to face the future, and grace to face the past, church. And if it wasn't for grace, we could not stand here in this church today and say, I'm a child of God, because if it wasn't for grace, God would have wiped the earth clean. But he said, I have grace for you. I have mercy for you. So much grace and mercy, I'm going to send the one son that I love that is flawless to die for your sins. Each and every one of you can have grace and experience the love of Christ if you will accept my son as your Savior. Yes, you have wronged me, but I forgive you. And then 
to take it a little bit further in Luke 23, 34, he says, when he's on the cross and these men have beaten him, have cut him open, have stabbed him and whipped him, he shows us one more time what grace and compassion looks like. He says, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Church, you must have forgiveness. You must be like Jesus and willing to forgive, even in the midst of the valley. Standing in front of death with his arms stretched wide open, Jesus still loved those who nailed those hands to the cross. He wasn't saying forgive the one that strapped me to the cross. He wasn't saying forgive the one that nailed my feet to the ground. He wasn't even saying forgive the one that crown, put the crown on my head. He was saying forgive all of them, Lord. I don't want to just pick Brother Sam over here or Brother John over here. I want you to forgive them all because they know not what they do. Some of you are holding grudges today. And some of you are upset today. And some of you have experienced unforgiveness in your heart today. But you must have grace to live and grace to forgive, church. Yes, it's going to be hard, but you can do it. The Greek word for forgive has many different meanings, and it applies to many different situations. I want to focus on three that directly apply to this passage. The first meaning is to let go, let alone or let be. The second is to, keep up, to give up or keep no longer. And the third is to disregard. This means that everything God had against you at one point in time has been let go of. It has been wiped clean. It has been disregarded. It is no more. So you need to do the same for those people that have wronged you, have upset you, and you need to realize that they deserve a clean slate. They deserve all of it to be wiped clean and forgiven. And yes, it's going to be hard. No, you don't have to be their best friend. No, you don't have to go up to their house and feed them every Saturday. But you do got to learn how to love them. You you do got to learn how to coexist in a place where they stand. You got to learn how to be compassionate. You got to learn how to have grace and mercy. Some of you are going to walk into situations this weekend. And when you go, you need to remember this message. God forgave you. You show them what forgiveness is. You show them what it looks like to be a light for Christ. They're going to try to taunt you. They're going to try their best to get at you, but God says just let it go. Extend forgiveness. There's four reasons we should extend forgiveness when we're not even asked to extend it. The person may not know that they have wronged you. They may not know that there is even a problem, church. They may no longer have contact with you. The situation continues to hurt you until you let it go. That's reason enough right there to let it go. You open yourself for further sin, anger, bitterness, and resentment when you harbor unforgiveness. I think about the many times I've looked at people that have wronged me. And I'm going to tell you, I was a negative type person with that kind of stuff because I'd tell them. And I know it ain't right. But I had a lot of unforgiveness, so I'd look them in the eyes and say, I don't care if you fall off the face of the earth as long as I don't have to deal with you. That wasn't the right way to be. But then God come in one day and he changed all that. You see, God can change a man's heart. I had a lot of anger built up before God. I could get mad at the drop of a hat if I needed to. But God, you need to remember today, but God. When you get mad at somebody and you're beginning to get upset, remember, but God. Remember what he done for you. Remember how Jesus said, forgive them, Father, for they know not what they do. Even when they was nailing him to the cross, he still wanted them to be forgiven because he had compassion for them. Church, when we get that kind of compassion, imagine what God can do with us. The Greek word Jesus uses in Matthew is a fifth, epiphany. It's spelled A-P-H-I-E-M-I. -E the word has three major applications. It's used 146 times in the New Testament, and it's translated 52 times as leave and 47 times as forgive. For example, this word is used in Matthew 6 and 12, which reads, And forgive, a fifth of me, us our debts, as we forgive, a fifth of me, 
our debtors. This means to let alone or disregard, to let go or keep no longer, to leave, to go away. The forgiveness that Jesus gave us, he wants us to give to others in many different occasions and many different reasons. When forgiveness is given, the matter is no longer held against the person. The situation is no longer remembered in a negative light. The person doing the forgiving is set free from the hurt and pain. Forgiveness is an expression of God's grace, church. Forgiveness is the radical concept that God would no longer view us as a stranger, but as his son and daughters. Forgiveness opens doors to heaven, to humanity, and gives us a glimpse of the character of Christ. Forgiveness is only available through a personal experience with the rising Savior. Forgiveness, an expression of grace. Do you have forgiveness tonight? Have you been forgiven tonight? Without grace, forgiveness would not even be possible for any of us. Grace made it possible when God gave his only begotten son. Forgiveness is an expectation of grace. Matthew 6, 14 says, If you forgive men when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. Verse 15 says, But if you do not forgive men with their, their sins, your Father will not forgive you your sins. Forgiveness is important, church. Forgiveness is hard, but it's important. We are children of God. Most of us in here tonight on a Wednesday night, we're the core of the church. If we cannot forgive others, how are we going to lead others to Christ? If we cannot look past what they've done, how are we going to show others the love of Christ? Jesus makes it abundantly clear that the expectations of those who are forgiven is also to forgive those who hurt you. Forgive others. If we choose to harbor resentment, we're choosing to ignore the command of Christ. And he has all right to be mad at us then. Do you realize that today? If you choose unforgiveness, then you're choosing to deny Christ. You're choosing to deny the command that he has given you. Some of you need to realize tonight, you're mad at that person for doing you wrong, and you're sitting there doing the same thing to Jesus by harboring unforgiveness. Can I tell you tonight that I had to pray, Lord, please let me be forgiven all of those people. Don't let me harbor up that anger anymore because I know it could come up easy. Let me be the one that forgives them. Let me be the one that shows love to them. I often ask myself, what would I do if those people now come into the church? But you know what I would do? I'd come in with a smile. I'd shake their hands. I'd tell them they was welcome at my Cray Church of God. And I'd come up here and preach the word of God to them and pray that they got salvation. There's a lot of people that we, we all have family members, now let's just be real, that we really don't want to spot at the table for. We just assume they skip the family gatherings. But that's not the way a Christian should be. We should always be willing to forgive them. We should always be willing to look past what happened. And I'm going to close with this. I'm not going to hold you real long. We will never be more like Jesus than in those moments when we choose to forgive our character is changed when we live in a spirit of forgiveness, church. Our transformation is revealed by our willingness to forgive. Unwillingness to forgive ruins relationships. Unwillingness to forgive ruins relationships. I want you to stand with me all around this place. Some of you have been married for a long time. Some of you have been in a relationship with your spouse for many, many years. But you know, there's still something that you haven't forgiven them for. And if that's you, you need to let it go. Because you chose to forgive them. And you need to live in forgiveness. And forget the past. And live for the future. Unwillingness to forgive removes our confidence, church. But we can have confidence in Christ because he says all things are possible through me. You say, well, I can't forgive them. No, you may can't by yourself, but Christ can help you do it if you'll trust him. 
There'll be days that you are treated unfairly but still forgive. There'll be days that you feel like the world is against you but you must still forgive. There will be times when bitterness comes into your heart and tries to wreck you, but you must be willing to call it out and say, Father, I forgive them. For some of you, that may happen tomorrow because you've heard this message and you know how the devil works. Forgiveness is important. How do we handle forgiveness? Realize that we're not hurting the people that are unforgiving in our heart. We're hurting us. You're not bothering them. They don't care that you don't forgive them. They could care less that you are mad at them. They're going to live their life. But it's hindering your life. It's hurting your walk. It's hindering you. So you must forgive them. It releases the pain, church. When you're willing to forgive, you just feel this weight lift up off of you like you've never felt before. When you say, I can't forgive, remember what Jesus did for you and is still doing for you. Do you realize each and every day Jesus has to forgive someone, probably many of many of many of people. Each and every day, he has to look and say, I forgive them again, Father. I still love them. Pastor, he, he's lying. He don't get mad. They messed up but I still love them. Even when we embarrass him, how many of you get so embarrassed with your kids when you get home, you're like, you better hope I'm calmed down before we walk in the door. If not, it's going to be bad. God don't do that. He don't say I'm mad. He says, I still love you, son. You embarrass me, but I still love you and you forgive him. Boy, I be wanting to beat the brakes off a river sometimes about that. Renew your commitment to be forgiven. Renew your commitment to Christ so you can forgive others. The only way you're going to be able to forgive is if you are truly forgiven by Christ. If you're harboring anger, if you're harboring unforgiveness tonight, you need to recommit yourself to Christ and say, Lord, if somebody in here just said, well, I'm still committed to Christ, and say you wasn't fully committed is what I'm talking about. Because unforgiveness puts a gap there. It causes, causes us to be, causes a gap. It causes a separation. But if you'll forgive tonight, if you'll allow Christ to forgive you, and it's going to be hard, but pray for the one that has wronged you. Pray for the, your relationship with them. Now, I can tell you I want no relationship with certain people, but if God tells me I have to have a relationship, well, I'm just going to have to eat it and go with it. So if you see me at the dinner table with them, know it is God. I promise you. And, and there's nothing wrong with that. It's okay. We must show them love just as Christ showed us love. So are you dealing with unforgiveness today? Are you harboring a grudge you cannot get past? Some of you may be dealing with it with a person in this church. Well, they wronged me. Well, they upset me, so now I'm mad at them. Let it go. It's not hurting them. It's hurting you, church. Let it go and move on. If God was out mad was always mad at us for messing up, we would never get forgiveness. Think of all the times you denied him. Think of all the times you rejected him and turned from him when he told you to do something, and you know he did, but you refused to do it. But he still said, I love you. Come on back. My arms are still open. But you're mad over something worldly. You're mad because mom and dad died, and they got something you wanted. Or maybe, maybe it was just a bitterness, just a fight in the family. And you can't even sit down and eat Thanksgiving dinner without thinking about it. I'm going to tell you, church, that's not the way we need to be. I can tell you, we need to be able to sit down with whoever God tells us to sit down with. It's not going to be easy. It's not supposed to be easy to serve God. 
but you can experience that forgiveness in your heart for them if you will ask God. So I'm going to ask you a real simple question. Is there anyone in your life that you have unforgiveness towards you? If there's anyone in your life that you're still mad at, you need to come ask God to help you get over it. And I tell you what, I'll make it easy for you. I'll be the first one down here to say, Lord, help me carry that torch. Because I know that I still have to pray about the unforgiveness sometimes. And all it takes is just one little strike of the match and it'll pop up. So I'll be the one down here praying. So if I don't come pray with you right quick, just know Pastor had to be first. So I'm closest to the altar. I'm going to get the first taste of it. But it's okay. You come to him. Don't let the devil hinder you. Father, tonight, as we get ready for this altar call, if there's someone here experiencing unforgiveness, or, Father, they're struggling with it in their life towards another person, or they haven't never experienced your forgiveness, Father, let them be strong enough to walk down and ask for forgiveness. If there's one out there that needs to forgive someone, Father, give them forgiveness. Let them ask you to lead and guide them and show them how to ask for forgiveness. But not only that, Father, give us strength to forgive those who have wronged us, those who are hindering us from serving you tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. These elders are open. You're more